the fence here, fighting the tackle here, and then fighting what's going on up there. So how many people have heard what's going on with Siskiyou County? Just a little bit. How many people know that our government and environmental groups are working to get dams out in California? How many realize that they are doing this across the United States? Mm -hmm. So, Siskiyou County, like the Bay Area, is the pilot program for um, getting us off land and getting us into what you've probably heard is stack and pack housing. In fact, a couple years ago, I'm fairly new to the Agenda 21 conversation, I, and I know a lot of you have been following this for many, many years. And the how I started doing research on it, and my family started doing research on it, is the Department of Fish and Game sent a letter to uh, my parents. They have a 4,500-acre ranch. Um, it's very sustainable. It's beautiful. We've owned it for 30-some-odd years. Um, it's a small uh, cattle ranch um, as far as how many cows that we run on our property. My dad, who's a professional engineer, uh, worked for the state actually here in... Yeah. Oh. This one? Oh. We can hear it. Thank you. Oh, I can hear you. I can hear her, yeah. My dad is a conservationist. In fact, I believe he is one of the truest conservationists that could be out there. We love our land. He builds ponds that are permitted, by the way. Um, we get permission and my dad pays the fees to get these ponds on our property. Anyway, just to say that our land is beautiful and it's not because we've let it go to the wild. It's because my dad has, and mom have worked hard to make it even more beautiful, to add ponds where there wasn't going to be ponds to attract wildlife. Anyway, so the Department of Fish and Game showed up to my parents' uh, ranch uh, a couple years ago. In fact, they did this to many ranchers in the Siskiyou County area. And they were flanked with guns, or they flanked my parents, one, one Department of Fish and Game warden on one side, one on, at their back. They had guns, they had bulletproof vests, asking why are you not signing onto this thing called the Incidental Take Permit Program, which is a bucket like a bucket where you pay money into, as a rancher, as a farmer, as a property owner, you pay money into this bucket, and it's supposed to protect you from any endangered species, in this case, the coho salmon, if it's found dead on your property. I think it's important to know that if a coho or a salmonid or any endangered species is found dead on your property, for the fish, the coho, it's $25,000 per oh. incident. So you can imagine if 10 salmon were found dead on your property, that could be like 250,000. Well, the problem is, is that the coho salmon, which is on the endangered species list, isn't even a native fish to California. So there's, to be a, an endangered species, it must be native. But science has shown that, and facts have shown, that this fish does not belong here in California. It's a cold water fish, and where Siskiyou County is, it's arid land, it's high desert, it's Mediterranean weather. Those fish don't like that hot weather. So why the dams are coming out? The dams are coming out, like Orlean mentioned, there's four, three in Siskiyou County. Why they're coming out is those fish, which are non-native to California and should not be on the endangered species list in the first place because it's non-native to California, can't swim 300 miles upstream like they supposedly used to. We're talking about the Klamath River here. And if in the native language, Klamath means stinky. So the river, the Klamath River, is a stinky river because when the salmon should be spawning, which is coming up, actually they're starting to spawn now. So uh, late in the summer, the river, the Klamath River, which is a, a snow melt runoff river, is back before the dams were in, was stinky. Those fish couldn't swim up the river anyway. So at this time of year, before the dams went in, all you saw was, uh, and, and the other thing to know is that the area is basalt, it's volcanic. So when the water was out, there were no dams, the water, uh, the snow melt off was at its trickle. There was nothing but brown water. And there were uh, farmer, 
there's there's a, a rancher, uh, Rex, who wanted to be here, but he's busy fighting up there and trying to maintain his ranch so we all can have food. Uh, his family, he's fourth generation rancher on the Klamath River, and he would tell you that when the dams, when the, when, before the dams were in, and when there were flash flooding, none of these environmentalists were up there to help them maintain the river. But now all of a sudden, in the last 10 years, there is nothing but environmentalists up there and government agencies, the Department of Fish and Game, um, the NOAA, the NMFS, and these, I know these are all acronyms, I know some of them, but anyway, um, they, are not, they were not there to help when people were getting flooded out of their homes. So um, the dams have already, I, Ken Salazar, how many know who Ken Salazar is? He's our Secretary of the Department of Interior. I heard and read in an article um, that he is celebrating another dam removal in the state of Washington, in fact, in Olympic Park. And we all would not be here if it weren't for our water infrastructure. We would not be here if the civilization always follows where you can control water. So the dams were put in by the government back in these, these dams in particular in Klamath, um, on the Klamath River in Siskiyou County, were put in in the early 1900s to help bring civilizations to where, and people to where natural uh, resources um, appear. So in Siskiyou County, we have amazing resources. We have timber, we have agriculture, and we have mineral. And with the dams, we also have rec recreation, and I think that's a resource. But um, so what Department of Fish and Game and other governmental agencies and environmentalist group have been working on is to destroy the natural, re the, to destroy our ability to use those natural resources which we were given on Earth. And they started with um, the mining, and mining actually just to know, and <coughs> dredging, and dredging is uh, you get in the river and you pull out the minerals in, in, in the rocks and uh, and dredging is excellent for these coho salmon. The coho salmon need to go in and spawn and they need to like lay their eggs, but they can't because nature automatically uh, compacts the rock in the river. What dredge miners do, which they can no longer do in Siskiyou County, by the way, they have been put on a moratorium, but what dredging does is it breaks up this concrete, like it breaks up this concrete, and then the fish can get in there and lay their eggs. Well, they can't do that now. They can't, the, my, the dredgers can't, and the fish can't. So anyway, it's a system that with people working with animal and science, it works and it, it expands and it's sustainable. And what the environmental groups want you to know or what you want you to think is what we do in Siskiyou County is unsustainable. So there's the, the dredging. Well, then there's the timber, which we, California had the, one of the most amazing, incredible resources of timber. Well, to now timber your land, first you all have heard about the spotted owl, right? Did you, and, and that the spotted owl has completely destroyed our timber industry. Did, uh, did you know that um, recently the, in, in the, the spotted owl was put on the endangered species list, right? Well, did you know that recently the government has, in the Department of Fish and Game and environmentalist groups have said, oh, well, uh, the spotted owl, we've just discovered that it has been mating with the barred owl. <laughs> and it prefers the barred owl. It prefers the barred, barred owl over its own spotted owl. So it wasn't because we were cutting down trees and that the trees were disappearing, so therefore the spotted owl was disappearing. It was actually because the spotted owl is more attracted to the barred owl. And I don't know about you, but I call that evolution. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so besides, you know, the, the dams coming out, which is a huge issue, and we're working hard and fast to, uh, to save our dams, the other issue is our timber. 
And just to give you just a really rough idea of what, what it takes to now do a timber harvest if you own a timber land. Um, and by the way, there's a lot of natural disasters going on. And the country can use our timber, but instead we're, we're um, importing it from Canada right now. So we're not using our own resources. We're destroying our ability to use our resources, and then we're importing our resources and paying even more money for resources that we already have here. So, um, where am I Timber. Timber. The timber. So, so to do any kind of cutting on your timber land, you have to have a timber harvest plan done. And what used to be a 15 to 20 page document is now a 250 page document and they have to go in and, and they used to work with one agency now these these um, foresters who are also great environmentalists they're on our side by the way um, they now have to uh, not only go state and local government agencies to get their timber harvest plan that passed now they have to go federal and environmental and all these other things. What used to be about a two to three thousand dollar timber harvest plan is now fifty thousand oh. dollars. So the farmer, the rancher, the timber owner has to now pay fifty thousand dollars to have a few trees cut off their property. So um, so not so now um, I'll go back to ranching. How many heard that the EPA has now declared hay, hay. as a pollutant? Yeah. Hay? Hay is, hay is now a pollutant. Yeah. Pardon? I know. So, you know, um, what I want... Um, so, just to give you an idea what it's like to maybe be a rancher, you know, who, are, it, we get amazing food from our ranchers and farmers here in California. In fact, I declare we get the best. It's sustainable, it's healthy, it's uh, fresh, it's by people who love their animals and love their land. And uh, to experience the day in the life of the rancher these days is, uh, they wake up every morning wondering if the Department of Fish and Game is going to show up with, um, with uh, you know, handcuffs um, because they haven't signed on to the incidental take permit program, which, by the way, the ITP program is all about taking your water rights away. Even though they don't want you to know that, they're saying, we're trying, this is back to the fish now, they want you to think that, oh, we're here to help you and be your partner in saving the fish. Yeah, right. Well, first of all, the coho salmon, besides them not being native, they don't even belong in this country because it's so boron rich. Trout do very well up in our rivers, but the salmon don't do so well. So the Department of Fish and Game, who wants you to sign on to this incidental take permit program, once, they, once you sign on, which some ranchers unfortunately have, once you sign on, the Department of Fish and Game come up, can come on your property at any time they want. And we know that when any government agency comes onto our property, it is opening us all up for more violations, whatever violations they come up with. They, they often use the word, which I think is quite funny, substantial. And we'll ask them, well, what's substantial? Well, substantial is when we think it's significant. Well, what's significant? <laughs> they don't have a definition for it. They don't work. There's, there's several different agencies working, government agencies, who aren't communicating with each other. So they'll show up on your property, and one will say, we want you to uh, uh, clean out the water. So as a rancher, as a farmer, if you have water running through your property, you are responsible for that river being clean. Well. Then the, another agency will come along and say, we want you to stop using the water. But neither have communicated. So when you, having water run through your property, I know there's so much, this issue is just huge. We flood irrigate, and you all have probably heard that flood irrigating is terrible. 
In fact, the government is working hard to have all of us ranchers and farmers put sprinklers on all of our land. Sprinklers will cost anywhere between 50 to 100,000. So we have the $25,000 fish, we have to pay for this incidental take permit program, which is several thousand dollars a year. Now we have to fence, um, or now we've got to do sprinklers, um, and then we've got to fence 50 miles along the river, both sides of the river, by the way, that runs through my parents' property. It's got to, it's got to be fenced 115 feet that way and 115 feet that way. The 115 feet that way is in the middle of our lawn, right in front of our house. So, so that fencing is going to be very, very expensive. Plus, we can't, you know, use pasture that is ours because they don't want us to use pasture. So anyway, all these things are adding up, right? So I don't know how our farmers and our ranchers are going to su survive down the road. I was trying to make a point. That is a good point. That's a good point. I think that's what it is, right? So um, what we are, so what the rancher and the farmer is experiencing are all these new regulations that are coming up, and all of them are going to come to a head in January. And what they face every day is when are they going to come on my property and put handcuffs on my wrists because I am refusing to give up my private property rights. So what I want you to know is, is that the, system, the people, and this is the Shasta Valley, and this is also the Scott Valley that are going through this. There's other issues like the juniper tree. The government says and environmentalists say that the juniper tree is non-native to California. So if you drive up to beautiful Siskiyou County, you will see lots of juniper trees. In fact, they're everywhere. You'll drive by and you'll see deer under these juniper trees. Well, what your government dollars, taxpayer dollars are going towards are cutting down these juniper trees. In fact, my dad was um, approached uh, two, a year or two years ago by an environmentalist group saying, we want to pay you for cutting down all these juniper trees. Well, if we were at the ranch right now, there'd be this big mountain behind us. It's called Table Rock, and it's beautiful, and it's got this flat top to it. Behind it's Mount Shasta, even though you and I wouldn't be able to see Mount Shasta right now and it's covered with juniper trees. So my dad points up to this mountain and says, okay, so if all those trees are cut down, what will be there? And this woman says, well, it'll be grass, and it'll be beautiful. And my dad says, okay, so when it starts raining, then what happens? Erosion. So they want us to think that, you know, all this stuff that they think is great, you know, this non-native fish, this, these non-native trees, um, you know, the, bar, uh, the spotted owl and the barred owl, their science is not right. They're not using fact and common sense. They're using an agenda, which I don't know why our government would do this to us. Why would they do this to us? Whether it's Agenda 21 or whatever, why would anybody do this to good people? It's amazing. And it's devastating. And they're using, just like you in the Bay Area who know that you're the pilot program, Siskiyou County is the pilot program for the rural area. In fact, there's a document there a, a couple of years ago, maybe it was last year, 2010. Yeah, that was last year. Uh, my parents were in a meeting with the Department of Fish and Game, along with a lot of other ranchers and farmers of Siskiyou County. And in this meeting, um, they were asking the Department of Fish and Game why fighting for the dams. Why are these, by the way, the dams are owned by Warren Buffett. I know you <laughs> may or may not be shocked by that, but um, so in this meeting, they were saying why the dam should come out and that the fish and blah, blah, blah. So my mom, and this is on, I found this um, on the internet. So it says, you know, who spoke and landowner, Donna, bunch of galoo people. Anyway, my mom says to the Department of Fish and Game, Mark Stouffer, who was the director at that time, he's now been removed because Siskiyou County has been so strong and has gotten him removed. But she says, okay, so back, this is back to the coho salmon. And so she says to him, 
All right, so let me picture this. At the mouth of the Klamath River, we've got commercial fishermen, we've got charter boats from China, we have charter boats from Japan, and now the NOA has let Russian fishing boats off the mouth of the Klamath River, which is where these salmon supposedly come from, right? So they're out fishing, getting their, and they've got their nets or whatever. Well, then closer to the mouth of the Klamath River um, are our own commercial fishermen. And they're doing their netting, you know, they're fishing and they're getting all these fish. And then closer to the, into the mouth of the river are all of our protected uh, species, like your, uh, your sea lions and your sea otters. And they're taking their collection of fish that are supposedly coming up. Oh, and my sister just says, uh, eagles and all predators of these fish. So now these darn fish have to worry about these birds flying over. And then, yes, and then there's uh, several different tribes who get to gill net. And I love the Indians, by the way, so the Native Americans. So this is not against them. This is just against the idea. So they get to gill net. And then, so by the time these fish get all the way up, which was my mom's point, by the time these fish get all the way up, 100 some odd miles up to these dams, they're so darn stressed out, I wouldn't <laughs> want to return back to that river anyway, right? So my mom says, so what are you, so now you're claiming this all on ranchers and farmers because we irrigate and we use some of the water, the diversions out of this river, or in, that would be diverting into this river. So you're blaming all these dead fish on ranchers and farmers, or the, the not the dead fish, but the, lower return of these fish on we farmers and ranchers when you're not regulating any of that. And she said, are you going to regulate that? And he said, nope. <laughs> so there's just this huge disconnect. And I don't know, just putting the pieces together, it's obvious what they're up to. The other thing they're up to, which is uh, to me devastating, is um, through executive order, the government has an opportunity to monumentalize. How many people know what monumentalize is? Monumentalize is you take a piece of land that you declare somehow has some unique properties to it, that it should be off limits to all people, except for government agencies, of course. So, and environmentalists, yeah, thank you. So, uh, what they're calling a climate refuge between Southern Oregon and Northern California is could be an executive order of over 58,000 acres of monumentalization. So when you start putting all these pieces together, and now vision the UN Biodiversity Agenda 21, wow, that beautiful yeah. red map, right? You can put all those pieces together, and it makes perfect sense what's happening. They want us off the land. They want us off the land now and how they're gonna get landowners off their land is they're gonna regulate them to death, that they can no longer, because eminent domain would be too expensive, right, for the government, so it's easier just to say, you know what, we're gonna regulate the heck out of you, and then they'll just slowly go away, the land will go, once they take our water away, the land won't be worth what it's now is now, and they'll buy our land on pennies on the dollar, and either the Nature Conserv... By the way, the Nature Conservancy has been partnering with the Department of Fish and Game to buy ranches up and around where um, our family's ranch is. And, um, in fact, we just found out in the last, uh, I guess, what... Where'd my sister go? Two months? That um, we also have a little log cabin. There's no electricity. It's like not like Al Gore's. It's probably like an outhouse for Al Gore. And um, it's in the Sierra Nevadas, and we just found out that the lakes near our little cabin are being bought by Trout Unlimited, the Nature Conservancy, um, another group called, I just found out, Bentley Agrodynamics, who's partnering with this company called IGT, which is International Game Technology. Both at Bentley and IGT are out of Menden, Nevada. IGT is a gambling company. They, they build slot machines. They recently moved their headquarters to San Francisco. So when I saw that, I'm like, something's going on here. Like, they're setting up shop in San Francisco for something, and I don't know what, but I think we all need to start 
investigating and just blowing the lid off this thing. But also that Nina told me that um, the Nature Conservancy also has a beef company. It's called Conservation Beef. And they're selling beef. I had no idea. So what I think is happening is, has anybody heard of vertical farming? Or sky farming? You, there's plenty of videos on this. But vertical farming and sky farming, this is why they're getting us off our ranch, ranches. They're getting us uh, farmers off the land. They're doing their stack and pack housing. And eventually you're going to see a big building. It's like a greenhouse is stacked on top of each other. And, and you, this may sound like another conspiracy theory thing, but there are universities that are already teaching this. So they're, they're, they're going to stack all these greenhouses on top of each other. At first, I think, this is just my thought, the animals are going to go down at the bottom. In fact, there is a video about this. Cows at the bottom, sheep, whatever, and then eventually it goes up to plants. Well, the methane from the animals will power the building. <laughs> and there'll be, uh, like, um, factory lines of people, like, pulling seeds and replanting. But you know what? That keeps, that, local, you've heard of local food? Local, local food and 150 mile radius eventually will mean that we'll all be in these, you know, in these tightly packed high density areas and that the food that we get is only 150 mile radius. So if you think about that, that takes up all ranch land in the areas that have prime agriculture land. So, um, yeah, so that's, I think, where we're heading. It's scary. They're going to regulate us off our land. They're doing it now. And unless people and the public start speaking up and demanding that we get food from California, and it doesn't mean 10 miles, you know, we need to re-educate the, the community. We need to re-educate our schools. We need to take every opportunity. If you're in a, in a shopping line and, you know, you've got fruit, and somebody says, oh, I love my fresh fruit. Well, I always use those opportunities to say, yeah, can you believe it that, you know, eventually because of what they're doing to ranchers and farmers, we won't have fresh fruit from here. It's going to either come from this factory building or it's going to come from another country. And then that sparks a conversation. I use every opportunity I can to bring something up about something that's happening in either the Bay Area or in, in Siskiyou County. And my request to everybody, and then I have a little announcement. My request to everybody is start educating yourself because every opportunity, like if you're in school and you have an opportunity or you have kids who are in school and they can do a presentation, have them have the presentation about what's happening to our, our rural lands. Have them have a presentation about what's happening to, um, why are we seeing so many sidewalks being worked on when we're flat out broke? Why are they fixing sidewalks that were perfectly okay before? Why are they doing this mixed house? Why are they building four stories high in cities of, of lofts when we've got, you know, mortgages and bankrupts and all these homes that are, like, available to people? Why are we building all these homes? Um, look at your census. Look at your city census. So in the past, for example, in San Carlos, the population has gone up 700 people, 783 people, something like that, in 10 years in San Carlos. So why is our government funding thousands and thousands of these lofts to be built? Who's going to move there? Who is going to move there? So start doing research on Siskiyou County. Get yourself like immersed in all the issues that are happening, and you can also do this around the United States. But anyway, here's... So do that, and like every opportunity you have, speak about it. And here's the next thing. And this is, um, we're doing a bus tour to Siskiyou Tink County, and it's going to happen. Um, here's the thing. Uh, if if you're, you're interested in coming up for a day and going to a hoedown, and we're doing a film debut, we've, are, we've filmed um, what's happening in Siskiyou County, and if you're interested in coming up and being a part of that and helping us fight the rural fight, I invite you to uh, I'll have a little sign-up sheet or somehow figure that out. But we'd love to see you. We'd have, love to have your support. And uh, we got to go get them. <laughs>